Our next speaker, um, let's see, where am I? Oh, I, I am so excited. This man is a gentle giant. Um, I respect this man. This man knows what courage is. And I am so honored to introduce the ex-fire chief from Burns, Oregon, Chris Bryles. Facebook. That's how you Patriot do that. Patriot Mail Project for the political prisoners' names, addresses, commissary links. Patriot Mail Project on Facebook. That was kind of fun, wasn't it? <laughs> My name is Chris Bryles. I uh, moved to Burns, Oregon in 1978. Uh, you been there? It's a good little place. It's got a lot of beautiful people there. Yeah. It's got a lot of wonderful country. A lot of resources that you just wouldn't realize driving through town. Uh, I grew up on a ranch in Colorado, and I always learned that you help your fellow man. And you live your life right. You know, there's a difference between right and wrong. And if it's wrong, you don't do it. And if it's right, you stand up for it. It's pretty simple. It's pretty easy to figure out. It should be. Uh, I was asked to come and, and, and talk, and I readily agreed I would drive. Uh, my, my friend Todd Applegate drove me up here. And I want to talk to you about what I saw in Burns, Oregon. Uh, how many people here saw what happened to the Bundys in Nevada? Did it ever occur to you as it did to me? When I watched that, I thought, uh-oh, there's a bunch of radicals and the government's going to get rid of them. But that's because I, that was the information that I was getting on my TV. Yeah, right. And what didn't work out quite right for me it didn't ring quite true as all of a sudden the BLM after rounding up their cattle and killing them and doing all kinds of stuff the BLM left and I thought huh how is that not knowing the true facts not knowing the actual things that happened the BLM left. To me, that meant the BLM was in the wrong. And they knew it. And they left. But I didn't know anything about Ammon Bundy. I didn't know anything about Cliven. And all of a sudden, they said, well, Ammon Bundy is coming to Harney County. And he's going to be talking. Because of what the atrocities that had happened to Dwight and Stephen Hammond in Burns in Harney County. Here, they get, here these guys are. They get five years for setting a backfire to protect their own property that burned less than 150 acres of sagebrush. What is the best thing you can do for sagebrush? Yeah, burn it and, and it'll come back in grass. So they didn't harm the property. They saved their ranch. They were sentenced to a mandatory minimum of five years. Wow. Well, they got, and the, the judge says it would shock the conscience to impose these fines on these men for this type of an infraction. So they got far less sentences. They went and they served them. They got out of prison, and they and the government says, no, wait a minute. They forgot to, to serve the mandatory minimum. You have to go back. 
and they sent him back. So Ammon Bundy, he shows up with his people, and I'm going, what is going on in my backyard now? I got to go find out about this, you know. I'm not going to listen to anybody else. I'm kind of a bullheaded old turd that makes up my own mind. And I grew up on the premises that when you meet someone, you give him a good firm handshake and you look him right square in the eye. That's how you greet someone. And if you've ever done that, if you've lived your life that way, you suddenly realize that you can judge character fairly quickly that way. I went to the fairgrounds to find out what was going on. And I had chips on my shoulder. I thought, now, you know, I'm not going to have somebody coming in and causing a problem in my county. I shook him and Bundy's hand and I looked him in the eye and I immediately knew this is a real person. This isn't some phony person. This is a person that's concerned and honest and caring and loving. I mean, you can tell it right away. So I sat there in that meeting, and, and they, they gave us some training on the Constitution of the United States of America. Wow. Like what Ryan was talking about before. They gave us some training. They gave us the history and the history of the committees of safety and, and how valuable they were and what they were for. What the committee of safeties were for is to keep the government in line. There's a thing called redress of grievances. Hammond said, hey, let's, let's take another look at what the, has happened to the, to the Hammonds. That's a redress of grievance. Let's look at this. Let's see. Was it conducted correctly? Was it done right? Let's do a grand jury, figure it out. And if it wasn't done right, let's fix it. You know, it's pretty easy to sit back and say, well, do we have a problem? Okay, yeah, we do. Okay, what's it going to take to fix it? That's all there was. So he, he talked about the committees of safety, and we had about 60 people there, and they said, do you think we should have a committee of safety? And it was unanimous. All the hands went up. And I'm sitting there. And uh, they said, well, let's open it for nominations. And so they nominated the first person. And I thought, well, hey, that poor guy, he just, <laughs> look what just happened to him. I was the second one. <laughs> Later on, the, the, the first man that, that was nominated, he bailed out. He didn't want any repercussions. Uh, he didn't stand up on his own time, hind feet and, and speak out for what he believed because he's worried about some other issues. I thought, okay, I barely know what the committee of safety is, but I know that there's a responsibility here. And I have helped the people in my county since the day I moved there. And I wanted to be a public servant still. I had retired in 2006 as the Burns Fire Chief because of the five fusions that I've had to my back and some problems that I encountered while running the ambulance service. I was still a Harney County Fire Chief and looked at as a public figurehead. I'm fairly well known as brutally honest. If you ask me a question, I will give you the answer. And it's going to be true. If you don't like the truth, don't ask me a question. We had the Committee of Safety. We did a rally. We went up to the Hammonds. We sang songs to them. We gave them flowers. And we got back, and Ammon went out and took over the refuge. They say that it was an armed takeover, you know, and all of that. There was nobody at the refuge. They went out there. They had weapons. So it's a first, you know, it's part of your constitutional right. They didn't hurt anybody. They didn't threaten anybody. 
They didn't do anything other than go out and take over the refuge. And I didn't understand why. I didn't understand why did they do that. Because I didn't know. I just simply didn't know. I didn't understand what I do now. That's why I stand before you now, is the more people that understand what's going on and what your rights are, the more important that is. So they take over the refuge, and I and and immediately everybody in town says, oh, my God, that committee of safety, They just, look what they just did. We didn't have any knowledge of it. We didn't know what was going on. So I, I went out to the refuge. And what did I see when I got to the refuge? You've all seen the, the news media and the, the $9 million of damage that they did to the refuge and all of that. I went out there, yeah, an armed standoff, okay, an armed standoff. They say there was an armed standoff in Harney County, and there was. There was an armed standoff at our courthouse and at our junior high. There was no armed standoff at the refuge. When I went out there, I told him who I was. There was a pickup parked across the way, but I talked to him, and I said, hey, and they said, yeah, go on down. So I walked down. I didn't have somebody holding me on both arms or anything like that. I walked down there. And what did I see? I saw a great big blue dumpster there. And there were people hauling trash to that dumpster. That's what these horrible people were doing, is cleaning up that cesspool that they had encountered. <laughs> It hadn't been maintained. It hadn't been taken care of. There were dead rats in the in the shed and, and just mess everywhere. They were cleaning it up. I saw a guy replacing a light. I saw people working as a team. And it's like, wow, that's cool. Somebody cares about this place. I visited it several times before, and I always thought, wow, can't somebody clean the flies out of the windows? Can't somebody sweep the floor? Now they claim that they did all this damage to the refuge. Well, I'm here to tell you, they didn't do any damage to the refuge at all. All they did is enhance it, made it better. When all of this happened, they put chain link fences around our courthouse and our sheriff's department and the junior high. Chain link fences and concrete barriers. Because of the danger. There were all kinds of rumors about these horrible patriots that were coming in and they're going to cause start causing all kinds of trouble. And the patriots that showed up. You want to know what horrible things they did? We had a rip roar and snowstorm. And these nasty patriots were out there shoveling out fire hydrants and handicaps. Parking. That's what kind of horrible people they were. They were so horrible that they actually took coffee and sandwiches to the people that were guarding the courthouse and our airport with automatic weapons. That's what kind of bad people they were. Well, okay. They shut down the schools. They shut down the BLM. They shut down the Forest Service. <clears throat> they gave all the employees the gag order that you cannot go to any of these meetings. You can't talk about this. You can't do anything. I'm here to tell you that I was out at the refuge lots of times. And I felt like my city that I lived in was way more dangerous than the refuge. Way more. Way more threat there. We had MREPs running up and down the street. We had Black Hawk helicopters at the airport. We had great big generators and lights that stood up in the air and they just made the whole place light up. People couldn't sleep up by the courthouse because all the noise and all the lights There wasn't a gun at the refuge that could reach 30 miles. 
Not a single gun out there could have reached Burns. But everybody was supposedly in this great fear from these horrible people there that were going around and teaching the Constitution, that were teaching about our rights. Where was the fear coming from? It was generated by the government and by the FBI. Were we protected by our Sheriff's Department? No. No. Was our sheriff out there looking after our best interests? No. He was doing exactly what he was told by the FBI. That's a sad thing. We had blacked out windows, black SUVs wandering around town. And everybody said, well, that's the Patriots. You got to watch out. You know, they're creepy people. I went to a friend of mine's house and he told me, you've aligned yourself with the wrong people. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, well, at the, over here at the armory this morning, he said, some of your Patriot friends were over there. And he said, we had to call the cops on. And he got a call on the phone and he says, they're over there again. And he poked me in the chest and he said, you go find out what your cohorts are doing. And I said, I don't have any cohorts, but I ain't afraid of any man on this earth. I'll go find out. So I went over there, and at the refuge, here was two white vehicles on a black SUV. And they, as soon as I got there, they took off. Well, the two cars went one way, and the black one went the other way. And that was at the armory. That was at the armory in Burns. And so I followed that vehicle. I didn't have my lights on or nothing. I just followed them, and... And they realized I was following them and I wasn't going to go anywhere. And when we got to McDonald's, they went, drove around the parking lot for a while and they stopped. And I got out and I went and I said, hey, my name's Chris Bryles and I've been here a long time. And there's a lot of weird things going on in our community. And I just had a friend of 25 years say that you guys are my cohorts. So I'd like to know who you are <laughs> and, and, and what you're doing. And they said, well... We're just a couple of guys going through town looking for a place to start a new business. And I said, well, typically we don't start a new business in our armory. <laughs> and he said, well, we weren't at the armory. And I said, yeah, you were. I just followed you from there. And they said, well, you have no right to follow us. And I said, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. And I said, I just want to alleviate the fears in our community. You know, if you weren't doing anything, I just want to know the truth so that I can talk to my people. I don't like to see people be afraid. And they said, we're, we're just a couple of guys starting a business, like we said. And then the, the smaller of the two, and they were, weren't dressed in Patriot outfits or nothing like that. They were just dressed in ordinary clothes. One guy had a shirt that looked like he'd been painting in it. And they had ripstop uh, pants on like like Nomex pants. And uh, the smaller one said, well, yeah, we were at the armory. Okay. And what were you doing there? Well, we were just looking at the deer in the backyard. <laughs> there was a four point back there. that's a pretty good shooter. And I said, well, typically we don't shoot the deer in the yard at the armory. <laughs> and I Sense that you're not being honest with us. Would you, would you, would you please be honest with me? I said, well, we just want to get something to eat. That's all we want to do. And I said, I will buy your meal if you're just honest with me. Tell me the truth. That's all I'm asking. They wouldn't give me their full names. They just said they wanted to eat. So they did. They went into McDonald's. I took a picture of their license plate. I have it on my phone still. And I went to go up to the courthouse to find out what was going on. Bear in mind that I've lived there since 1978. There's not a person in Harney County that doesn't know who I am. And I walked up there to the concrete barricades and guards with automatic weapons in full tactical gear. And I went up there. I parked my rig. And I thought, well, I'm going to go over there. The guy met me with a rifle. He says, what, what are you doing? I said, well, I need to go talk to Dave Ward. Something's not right. He said, no, he's in meetings. He can't talk to you. 
And I said, well, you, can you tell him Chris Bryles is out here and I want to talk to him? He said, if you have a problem, you call 911. And I said, I'm not going to abuse the system like that. I said, but I do want to talk to somebody about some suspicious activity. And he said, just call 911. I said, well, thanks for nothing. You know? And so I went back down to the armory and there were, uh, there was a sheriff's deputy and the Burns police chief there. And they said, what's going on? And I told them, I said, these guys were dishonest. They were lying to me. And I don't understand it. While I was talking to him, the sheriff's deputy got a phone call. And he says, oh, okay. And I said, what's going on? He said, the two white vehicles are FBI vehicles. And the black SUV is a rental out of Washington State. And that's undercover FBI people. And that is to be kept a secret. Don't tell anyone. Does that sound right? You know, if you look at something, it's either right or wrong. That didn't feel right to me. So I was stewing about that. And our Harney County judge had his Harney County meeting at our high school. The bleachers were full of people. There were probably three times as many people that are here. He was out there strutting around on the on the basketball court. And he said, hey, uh, first the thing, he got the microphone. He said, I want you to know that there's a Harney County Committee of Safety. And they're in no way, shape, or form affiliated with Harney County. Now, they've got a website, and they've got our county logo on there without our permission. And he wants you to know to, to don't give any credibility to these people, you know. And this is in front of all these people. And so the microphone got there. My time's up, but I'm going to finish this a little bit. Uh, when the microphone got there, I had kept it a secret about the FBI until I had the microphone in my face in front of national <laughs> And then I let them know. And the next day I had a big argument with Mr. Stephen Grasty. And then I resigned as the fire chief because of the corruptness. And they tried to bait me into doing something wrong. And I will not work for dishonest government. Will not. What I want to close in, I received gobs and gobs and gobs of friend requests for Facebook. We have no, we have no radio station, no TV station in, in Burt. We do now, but it's not real well. Anyway, there were Lots of people that said, hey, you are a hero. You are an American hero. And that, yeah, but listen, it broke my heart yeah. to be considered a hero. Yeah. Yeah. I have two arms. I have two legs. Why should you be considered a hero? Because you stand up and speak the truth. Yeah. This is the United States of America. This is where we should all be able to stand up and speak the truth. Just look at me. I'm an old man. I'm not a hero. This room is full of people that can be heroes. All you have to do is stand up and speak the truth. Yeah. Thank you.